The movement of water is beautiful. In fact, liquids and gases in general move in a variety of compelling but subtly different and detailed ways. Fluid mechanics studies these motions in a clean mathematical setting. And one of the more interesting phenomena to describe are whirlpools and vortices of fluids. We can use an idea known as vorticity to describe these spinning motions and quantify and analyze them. So what is a fluid? Well, fluid refers to any matter that can flow and broadly this encompasses both liquids and gases. In order to understand fluids with our mathematical toolkit, it would be useful to think of them as a vector field. And you might be wondering, well, what exactly is a vector field? Well, a vector field is just a region of space where we can associate a vector with every point in the field. This two-dimensional flat blob you see on the screen is a vector field in 2D space, and we can associate a two-dimensional velocity vector with every point in the space. We can think of this as a flattened 2D version of the liquid we're trying to analyze, where the fluid flows in the x and y directions and we're neglecting any flow in the z direction. In the real world, however, fluids are a field of 3D velocity vectors in a region of 3D space. And we're going to describe the velocity of our fluid, u, at any point in space, let's say r, using a vector. u is a function of r because the flow of the fluid can be different at different points in space. Because this is a 3D vector, we can write it in column notation with x, a y, and a z component. Now that we understand fluid flow, let's try to understand vorticity. Vorticity is a quantity that measures how vortex-like or whirlpool-looking our fluid is. In other words, it measures our fluid spin at a particular point in the velocity field. How do we analyze something spinning mathematically? Well, this can be related to the curl operator from vector calculus. And this operator is just our three derivatives along the three axes we're working with in our Cartesian setting as a column vector which we're going to take the cross product of. And this makes sense because curl is the measure of the spinniness of a vector field. So our vorticity, omega, is defined to be the curl of our fluid velocity, u. And as a brief reminder, we can use the right-hand rule to determine what way our our vorticity vector will point in. If our fluid spins in this direction, that's the direction we want to curl the fingers of our right hand in, such that the thumb of our right hand will point in the direction of omega, our vorticity. Let's work through some examples. Let's say the first fluid we're analyzing has a fluid velocity u defined to be y, negative x, zero. This is to say the x velocity increases with the y coordinate, the y velocity is equal to the negative of the x coordinate, and there is no z velocity. So we can think of this as a fluid that can only flow in two dimensions. It looks quite pretty and it has a natural intrinsic spin to it that we'd love to analyze with vorticity. So our vorticity would just be the curl of this velocity, which is ddx, ddy, dz. Cross product with y 
minus x at zero. And for this example, I'm going to use the 3D determinant definition of the cross product just to write things out. So this is going to be equal to the determinant of i being our unit vector along the x-axis, j our unit vector along the y-axis, and k our unit vector along the z-axis. And we're going to write out our first vector, component by component, and then our second vector, component by component. And we want to take the determinant of this matrix. Expanding out the determinant, we get some sub-matrices. This one. This one. And this one. Let's write them out. Differentiate with respect to y. Differentiate with respect to z. Minus x. And zero. Multiply by i hat minus differentiate with respect to x differentiate with respect to z and from the other vector we're going to just take y and 0 that would be multiplied with j hat finally we're going to differentiate with respect to x and differentiate with respect to y and take out y minus x and that's going to be multiplied by our k hat along the z-axis this will equal to the y derivative of 0 minus the z derivative of x times i hat and both these terms go to 0 because 0 is a constant and our x position has no dependence on our z position and our next term is our derivative with respect to x of 0 and it's our derivative with respect to z of y and that's going to be multiplied by j hat and again these two go to 0 for the exact same reason as above finally we're going to have the derivative with respect to x of minus x minus the derivative with respect to y of y multiplied by k hat and this is our only non-zero component so our vorticity is just minus 2k hat or in column vector notation 0 0 minus 2 and a vector like this makes sense because if this is the xy plane viewed from an angle where our fluid is spinning in Our vorticity is going to point straight along the negative z-axis, which agrees with our right-hand rule. However, this idea of vorticity as curl or spinniness can get counterintuitive sometimes. Can we always say that any flow where omega is not the zero vector will look like it's spinning? Let's look at another example. Let's say this time our fluid velocity is just y zero zero. So the x component of our velocity increases with the y coordinate of our position and we have zero velocity along the y and z axes. So what this means is our fluid moves only along the x axis because uy and uz are both zero. Furthermore, because ux is equal to y, the fluid moves faster the larger our y coordinate is and it reverses direction for negative y. It's quite a pretty flow to look at. This is known as shear flow because it looks quite a bit like a shear transformation and it gets faster the further away from the x-axis we are. Let's compute the vorticity of this flow. And I'm going to work through this a bit faster than the last one, but it's the same principle. This is just going to be 
d0 dy minus d0 dz for the x component, negative d0 dx minus dy dz, and d0 dx minus dy dy for the z component. And using the same tricks as before, this evaluates to 0, 0, negative 1. That's very strange. The vorticity from example 2 is proportional to the vorticity from example 1. Does this? have twice the spinniness of this and the spinniness is in the same direction as well. Why do we still use this definition of vorticity? It seems so counterintuitive. These two fluid flows cannot look more different, but they have vorticities in the same direction and this vorticity is twice as spinny as this. Well. How do we reason about this? While the shear flow example doesn't look like it's spinning from our sort of global, all-seeing, third dimension perspective, this fluid flow can lead to spins locally. And a great way to think about this is the Earth itself. The Earth spins about its own axis. and there's plenty of fluid on its surface. The cool thing about circular motion is that a point over here and a point over here on the Earth's surface both complete an orbit in the same amount of time, but they have to travel two very different distances to do so. So the velocity over here is going to be much smaller than the velocity over here. And what does this mean for the fluids on the Earth's ocean? Well, the closer you get to the equator, the faster our fluid has to flow. And the closer to you get to the poles, the slower our fluid velocity is. So this actually looks like the top half of our shear flow diagram. And any perturbation or dips in pressure or current can cause this difference in velocities to become apparent. And from the perspective of this middle bit of fluid over here, the fluids to the south of it are moving much faster and in this positive direction, whereas the fluids to the left of it, well, the relative velocity makes it look like they're moving backwards from its perspective if it's standing still. And what do we get when we have some fluid moving faster over here and slow over here? Well, any perturbation can easily turn that into a vortex, and this could lead to a hurricane, or a cyclone, or typhoon, depending on what part of the world you are, you're in. But these are just three different names for the same phenomenon, so vorticity actually does encode vortices as the name would suggest, but they're not quite global vortices, rather they're local vortices, so this fluid flow doesn't look like a vortex to you staring at planet Earth from outer space. But if you were a fluid element, surrounded by velocity vectors, it would feel quite spinny. So vorticity really encodes local spinness or local vertices. And like a lot of things in physics, your perspective matters 